bless you, evangelist. Wife, how you doing today? Hey, how's the weather up there where, where you at? Hey, Lily. Today, I'm going to be real nice, y'all. But then again, I ain't. I'm going to talk about something that I think most people are afraid to talk about. Because they say that it's just the way the youth carry themselves today. So... Give me 30, I'm, I'm, I'm going to do this whole thing, I believe, in 30 minutes, y'all, because I feel as though that a lot of people don't like talking about it. Hey, Lily, it, it, and, 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 you know, um, I feel as though that it's kind of degrading, um, and the first time I, I tipped it to talk about it, I had got a, a, a lot of backlash about it to a point where... I had to go do my homework, and I studied what I studied the best. So I did my homework, <clears throat> and when I did my homework on it, it told me a lot because um, a lot of people, to me, are afraid to talk about it. But me, I am not afraid to talk about it because I feel as though that a lot of youth of today, and it, and what's so puzzling about it is not only youth. But I've actually seen grown-ups walking around, grown men walking around sagging their pants, and they thinking that it's cool. Um, I've also seen um, females walking around um, like it's cool to sag your pants. Um, but like I said again, today, I'm going to talk about this, and when I do it, it's going. It's, it, it, I'm just going to hit it and quit it, as you know, as I always so eloquently say. Um, and it's not everybody. Uh, I'm gonna. I'm gonna say that as well, because I feel as though that um, a lot of people um, feel as though that you know I shouldn't be talking about it, and a, a lot of them say, well, not everybody's doing it. Um, a, a lot of kids is doing good in school. They're going to college. They making something out of themselves, but you know what? What I want to, what I want to talk about today, uh, like I said again, I'm gonna hit it, and um, I'm gonna let it go, because see, just like um, everybody wants to talk about um, when I talked about guns at Christmas time, um, I got some really um, cool back talk, but I also got some negative back talk. Like one person said to me. They say, yo, how can you tell a, a mother what to buy their child? And I says, oh, okay, you're right. And I said, I'm not going to tell every mother what to buy their child. I said, but at the end of the day, what I am going to do is I'm going to sit back and I'm going to keep looking at statistics to see how many of, of us color, us color people is going to jail or prison for, for gun violence. And, and then I had one person say, well, um, that doesn't happen anymore. So I, I I said, okay, cool. The funny part about this, I got a phone I got a phone call. It was approximately maybe I would say around um, King's birthday, around mid January. And I get a phone call and this person is talking to me about quote unquote her son was arrested for attempted murder. Now, I'm in South Carolina. She's in Pennsylvania. Her son was 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 actually arrested for attempted murder. And you know, I had to be Fulton for a second, but I almost had a parham moment. But I but I kept it I, but I kept it cool. And I said, we did not just have this conversation about guns a month ago. 
and you told me that I shouldn't be talking about um, what people should buy their kids for Christmas. And all I said to you was, you know, hey, let's see what's going on in the world. So with that being said, I want to get to this thing about this sagging thing. People walking around with their pants down. People walking around um, thinking it's cool to show their underwear. Um, and like I said again, the last time I talked about this, um, I had to like go back and do my homework. And when I went back and I, and I commenced to doing my homework, I said to myself, okay, let's see what, well, let's see when this all, this all started. So as I was doing my homework, I began to look at a lot of things in society. I look at a lot of things in life and I began to say, wow, how did this happen? And then I asked myself, um, growing up in the inner city, I, I said, do history repeat itself? From slavery to the present, do it repeat itself? And I came up with the answer of yes, it does. A lot of things that happened. See, I, I, when I was in college, I, I, I took this class. It was like history before 1865. So a lot of things that happened uh, back in slavery days is basically happening today. It's a fact. It's like people say, well, history sometimes repeats itself. So I will go to, I will go to dancing. The stuff that they called the bus stop back in the day, they started calling it the electric slide. A lot of things that they said was called scat and, and the way they would, they would uh, bounce around on the floor and jump up and down. We call that break dancing. The same way that, that, that people say that um, when it came to, to a dress wear, people will say, no, um, I never wore bell bottoms. But now they have pants that call wide leg pants. Girls never used to like to wear their hair uh, uh, natural. But they had afros without perms. Then they went to plaits. Then they went to, to weave. Now they are back to natural. So history does repeat itself. When we when we had all faith and trust in God, even back in history, in slavery days, oh, they believed in God. They believed that there was a higher being to, 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 to get them from point A to point B. And over the years, over the years, it diminished. Now you got some people saying, is there is a God? And like I said, in, in one of my lives, people believe Google before they believe God. And now, when 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 the World Trade Center was bombed, everybody was praying. COVID hit, everybody was praying. You could you could you 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 could look at a person and say, uh, "Are you saved?" They might know they know what saved is, but they would say, "Yeah, I'm saved." So history does repeat itself. When you didn't believe in God, it takes something traumatic to happen for you to, to, to believe in God. So let me get back to this thing about sagging. If we look at sagging, sagging actually was in slavery days. It was, a, it was when the white men dehumanized black slaves wearing saggy pants, and they said it was to announce that they were available for their white masters. So back in slavery days, you had these 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 slaves walking around with their pants hanging off their behind. Well, they didn't have. You, somebody said to me earlier that they didn't have they didn't have belts, but they had ropes to tie that the pants they they, they called their, their underalls around their waist. Like I said, I don't. Oh, I'd have done my homework. So this is what happened back in slavery days. So to 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 dehumanize, to 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 make this man uh, um 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 be be looked at as something that of the masters use, not the master, the king that sits up high and looks down low, but a white man who was considered his master. So some white masters would rape their African American slaves. 
Subsequently, the victims were forced to wear their pants sagging so their masters could identify them for future attacks. So when you have these people humilitizing these black men, can you just imagine, and I'm and like I said, I, today is, is, is Real Talk Tuesday, but it's on a Friday. When you when you have women that go on a cycle, they used to have they use what they call maxi pads and tampons. But what 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 would a a, a African American man walk around looking like when he was bleeding from his 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 behind and others seen it? So you in a cotton field working, you picking cotton, but also you have, you you trying to stop the flow of blood from your master taking his liberties with you. So this has happened back in slavery before 1865. History repeats itself. We have females who were punished. And it says, whipping a common slave was a form of slavery punishment. Demanding the removal of clothing from the female slave, the guarantee and the mitable of dis disrobing her down to her waist, although her state of half dress allowed the woman some modesty because she was half dressed. But the slave master did what? He exposed himself and he did what? He took advantage of her front and back. So she would do what? Walk around now with her pants or her trouser or her dress up some so she can get air to flow through her legs. But we still don't look at it as being something that's dehumi being dehumanizing as we it was as we walk around and see kids walking around with their pants down. We don't we don't we don't see that. But it happened years ago. It happened to the point where it now history revolved itself. We we don't see nothing wrong now with 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 kids walking around like that, girls walking like that. So it's it's okay. Let me let me go further. Jails, you have to realize jail and prisons have a code. And by me working working in that atmosphere or working, you know, in, in that entity, I've seen a whole lot. I've seen where how men come in, men but leave out as men, women. I've seen how 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 men have learned how to use toilet paper to make them tampons. See, you, you know, you you don't you wouldn't believe it's true because guess what? You have never been in that situation. You never worked in that environment. But see, there was a there was a guy named Fleece Johnson. Who was on True American, uh, and he he did a clip, and he talked about how booty was better to him than water. How 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 he would tell a man, "I want you, I want your booty." And he said, <clears throat> in one documentary, after um, spending ten to fifteen years in prison, he said the ugliest man became the prettiest Janet Jackson. But see, that's something we don't like to hear about because guess what? We don't know about it. We don't, we don't, we as, we as African Americans, we don't look at stuff until it knocks, knocks at our front door. We, we as parents have dropped the ball with the, with, 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 with the raising of today's youth. We have dropped the ball because now we say that my child is my best friend. My child is my smoking buddy. My child is my drinking buddy. My child is my clubbing buddy. But when do your child becomes your child? When do your child become the child that 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 you're raising to be <clears throat> a honest young man or to be a a a, a honest young lady? That's something we don't look at. And we don't look at that because it has yet to hit our homes. 
another reason why we don't look at that is because of this. Today's youth. Now check this out. Today's youth. We don't have grown-ups raising kids. Now we have kids raising kids. Could you just imagine when you was growing up, you was raising yourself? See, this is a topic that people don't want to watch me on unless I'm cussing or getting irate. But can you just imagine having somebody come telling you that your child is walking around with their pants hanging off their behind, say, over 30, 40 years ago, 50 years ago? The mama will whoop you. The daddy will whoop you. The grandma will whoop you. Your next door neighbor will whoop you. And nothing was never said. <clears throat> but this day and age, you touch my child, I'll sue you. You you better not touch my child. And it's okay. We don't look at the wrong until the wrong needs to be made right. Or when the wrong becomes reality and now you have to face the truth. So your child walking around sagging all day, in your eyesight, you, know, you never see it. But pop up at their school. Get off work a little bit early. And see what you see. How many states within the United States have banded sagging of pants in the streets? How many states? See, we don't we don't look at this banding thing because guess what? We'll say, that's not my child. But find out if your state has a has a has a ban regulation in, in, in order to block your child walking around with his pants hanging down. Or your husband or your daughter or, or even your even your significant other. I put it like that. Because now you got the LBGTQ, Z, whatever the devils are, they're now chiming in as well. They walking around sagging as well. So you have to realize something. Jail, like I said earlier, jail, jail and prison have their own language. And their language is there's no snitching. There's no uh, 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 telling of what's going on. Nobody talks about who get best, who, who get beat up, who get butt busted. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, I'm going I'm to read it. I'm going to read what that means in a minute. But see, prison prison and jail have that no snitch rule. Many people that have been to prison or have been raped in prison, they don't tell about it because it's dehumanizing to them as a man or as a woman. So you got to realize something. In the, in, in the female prisons, female prisons is, is considered a family. You have the mother, the father, the aunts, the cousins. Ain't no uncles. In the female prison, they would treat you like a like 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 a mother would treat her daughter. But you do have the father that's there as well. And the father is a is, is a stud. The stud in prison walk around with their pants down or, or, or beneath their waist. Them the ones you'll see out there lifting weights or wanting to lift weights, doing push-ups, saying, get over here. That happens in prison. In the male, male prisons is more barbaric. It's more, I'm the, I'm, I'm the, I'm the man. That's my woman. That's my son. That's my daughter. So it's who's the king. That's a male prison. So when the, when 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 the male attacks another man, he basically takes his manhood away from him. And he, he penetrates him as if though he was a woman. You would never know it if you never worked in that environment or been in that environment. And most people who have been to jail and to prison for a period of time, more than 24 months, won't tell you what actually happens behind that wall or behind that door or in that cell. They don't tell you what happened because you know why? It's embarrassing.
What is sagging pants a symbol of? Many sites say sagging is a, I hear that word again, dehumilitizing de uh, image for today's youth and adults. So it's a symbol of what? It's a symbol of actually, uh, Laura Magazine says, inmates allegedly sag their pants to signal sex sexual availability. Oh. So now our, ch our kids are walking around in the street sagging their pants because they want people to look at them to say, hey, I want you. Hey, you looking good. Hey, I like your draws. Hey, I want you. So now we're taking this slavery day entity, bringing it to the modern <clears throat> in prison is happening, on the street is happening. But in, in prison, it's actual reality. And it's a symbol that I am available. You got some people say, well, I'm in a gang. That's how we walk around. That's how we float. That's what we do. No. Because guess what? At the end of the day, who you bowing down to? Who draws are you washing? Who told us are you clipping? Who you having sex with? What man are you having sex with? What man is you allowing to penetrate you and you saying, that's my daddy? But then you'll come out, be in front of your children, your sons, your daughters. I was the man on the block. <coughs> yeah, you was the man on the block. So either you was doing somebody or somebody was doing you. What is buck busting? B U C K B U S T I N G. Buck busting basically is buck breaking. The allegation alludes to public, publicly punishing a male slave, typically by first fondling him, subsequently having sexual intercourse sexual assault or rape on him in front of others in order to what humiliate him this happens when people sag their pants and see we allow our children to go around sagging their pants like it's okay not understanding where this has come from and the, and the funny part about it is if you let a a a a a a uh well, if you let a doctor who deals with trauma uh, give the side effects of sagging pants or being raped, it says sagging pants get blamed for a number of health issues. Let's see what the, let's let's see what the what the health issues are. Urolo, ur, ur, urological and sexual dis, dis, dysfunction to severe prostate or bone growth deformity. So you have a person ramming you in your in your anal. Okay. Prostrate and bone growth dysfunction. Interesting. Interesting. Jardine says seeing a chiropractor is the ultimate ultimate way to figure out what's going on with you on the inside but it's okay many states have banded it but we as parents still allow it you may be unfriendly profiled if you're sagging your pants it's a funny thing we always say why my child why they, why, why they pick out my child? My child is no criminal. But if your child is walking around with his pants hanging down or she walking around with her pants hanging down, they may be un, unfriendly profiled because they say, guess what? He a thug or, 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 or she a thug or she about that life or he about that life. Not knowing that's a bad image on your parents. It's a bad image on you.
So we so when you are unfairly profiled because you're sagging your pants, don't get upset with the with the police who we already say that the police are bad people. Don't get upset. When you look at the number of people going into jail or into prisons and they walk around, they're, they're coming in the doors with their pants hanging down. That's why a lot of state prisons now have what you call jumpers. Because guess what? With the jumpers on, you cannot sag them. That's a fact. Like I said, I've done my homework. When did kids start sagging their pants? The trend of sagging pants has its roots going back. Now, now we talked about this the last time, but let's see if the facts stick stack up. The trend of sagging pants has its roots in strong, full effect in the 1990s. Hip-hop and urban culture in the United States, the exact origin are defiantly difficult to pinpoint, but it is often associated with the prison system and urban street culture. Now, they put, hold on, wait a minute. So you telling me that the blame for white kids, black kids, Ch no, white kids, Chinese kids, Mexican kids, Puerto Rican kids, these are all these are all kids skin tone colors other than African American. So you're telling me that the blame for all of this is is beginning it has started with African Americans? Wow. Urban culture, inner city culture started sagging and and, and we influenced other children to sag around the world because they see the black kids sagging. They say that rappers do it. So so now we look at the music <clears throat> we're looking at images. We're looking at the, the image of our children and what they're listening to and what they're watching on TV, what they're doing on social media. So now we're looking at saying that the black kids or black people started this. Wow. What does sagging mean in the hood? I got about four minutes. What does sagging mean in the hood? Sagging in the hood means that you the man, this your block, you cool like that. But where does sagging come from? So you cool like that, you you cool with being called a faggot. You 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 cool with with with, with call, being called a poo-poo pusher. You cool with that. See, that's that language that they talk in, in, in jail and prison. I had to educate him one day. I said, what's the meaning of a faggot? I said, because if everybody here that you said is a faggot, I said, we got a whole lot of bundle of sticks walking around. And like, what that mean? What that mean? I said, well, you call them a faggot, you call them a bundle of sticks. See, that's reality. Sometimes we have to talk to kids and grown-ups in, in the way that, that, that they may not understand. It's called educating them. We sit back and we don't we don't look at what's going on in society until it what knocks at our front door. We don't we don't look at what's going on in the world until it knocks at our front door. So that's what I love about America. That's what I love about the people that that, that we that we say got it going on. We don't watch our kids. Why do why don't we watch our kids? Because we don't know what they're doing behind closed doors. We don't know what they're doing. But see, when the police come knocking at your door, saying your kid did this or your kid did, did that, now you're ready to say, my child was profiled. My child don't sag his pants. But let me tell you something. For, 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 for the police and everybody else don't want to help your kids, the prison system is saving your child. Saving your saving your little queen, saving your little king. Because guess what? They have something called PRIA in the prison system. The Prison Rape Elimination Act. So if someone is, is trying to rape your child and they report it, if they report it. Because see, if was a fifth, we'd all would be drunk. If they report it. Like I said, prison got its own language. 
prison has saved so many people in prisons like Trenton State Prison, Rikers Island, uh, Camp Hill, uh, Lanesboro, Jamesboro. Prison has saved, Cook County Prison has saved a whole lot of people in the penitentiaries around the world, around the United States. Has saved a lot of people. Because guess what? Once you say somebody touched you or tried to rape you or raped you, that becomes now a street charge all over again. Now, they may be in there for, for say, extortion or or, or, or or an assault. Now, when you come out, guess what? You got to register for Megan's Law because now you consider a rapist. And nobody wants to come out saying, I raped another man in a man's prison. Or I raped a, a woman in a woman's prison. Nobody will come out of prison saying that. So like I said, prison has its own language. It does. When they call you 12, when they when they call you fly night, yeah, when they call you two-step, when they call you the fuzz, 5 CEO, prison has its own language. And people walk around sagging because they're saying, I'm available. I'm down with this particular group. I'm down with that particular group. And at the end of the day, we don't see anything wrong with kids walking around sagging, knowing where it actually came from. This is Black History Month. Tell your kids about it. And I'm almost finished. Facts and opinions. The fact is, females sag their pants just to look like males. That's a fact. You say you're a man, you say you're a boy, now you want to sag like them in the street. That's a fact. A fact. We call, we we love to call and say, not young, uh, not the youth of today is all going to prison or jail. That's a fact. We do say not all the youth are going to prison or jail in, in today's society. That's a fact. That's a fact. Here's, a, here's, a, here, here's another fact. A fact is we can say that butt busting or buck busting is taken because it is it, it takes because it is now is now being guarded by Priya, and Priya has saved so many men, women. Boys and girls that's being convicted of a, a of a crime in prison or jail. That's a fact. Okay, it's only a fact when the person reports it. Here's an opinion. It's our opinion. Excuse me. It's our opinion how sagging pants started until reality sets in. It's our opinion. It's our opinion that sagging is a sign of respect for males and females in urban or suburban life. It's an opinion. I didn't start it. My child didn't start it. Your child didn't start it. But guess what? Everybody else around here doing it. So it's an opinion. How it started. Or why other or why other ethnics are, are doing it. It's an opinion that it, it came it came from us. Here's my last opinion. It's an opinion because of blacks that live in subdivision, suburban culture, not only African American child sags their pants. That's an opinion. How's it an opinion? Because guess what? In front of you, your child won't sag. But behind your back, your child will sag. That's an opinion, huh? But it could be proven a fact if you see it for yourself. So the next time you want to talk about sagging pants, who's sagging, who's not sagging, why people sagging their pants, just think about it. Think about where it came from. Think about how how over history, how back in slavery days, our former uh, uh, slave ancestors was raped. How they was dehumanized and raped as slaves. And the same thing that is happening back then is happening today. So yes, history does repeat itself. It does repeat itself. And in the midst of it's repeating itself, we have an obligation. We have the duty to do what's right. 
So when you see kids walking around with their pants hanging off their behind, down but down below their buttocks, tell them to pull their pants up. If they cuss you out, just keep it moving. Because one day they're gonna wake up on the side of a bed. And they're going and they not gonna wish that they got on that side of the bed. And I see it a whole lot in jails and in prisons. So I just came on to let, to let that be known today. No matter how it looks, sagging is not a good image for nobody's child. I don't care who you are, what walk of life you come from. Walking around with your pants hanging off your behind is very embarrassing and very degrading. And if your preachers don't want to talk about it, guess what? It's okay. If the mothers and fathers don't want to talk about it, hey, it's okay. The same thing I said about people, kids with guns, they become infatuated with them. Reality sets in. Your child is in jail for attempted murder or murder. That's reality. When kids walk around here with their pants hanging down off, off, off their behind, and all of a sudden somebody get raped, unwanted unwanted sexual activities in their life, what's the first thing you're going to say? Why my child? But your child walked around showing his or her behind. Interesting. And I'm going to say this, and I'm going to say this, and I'm going to get off of here because I find this to be kind of funny. When you know that your child is sagging, go buy your child some good, some clean underwear. Let them sag in clean underwear and stop letting them walk around with dirty underwear with holes in them showing their skin. All right? Y'all have a blessed day. Guess what? This was Real Talk Tuesday on Friday. Sagging, just not right. God bless you all. Share it if you want to. Goodbye.